Chang An, Rome. Today, it's easy for us to assume that the world became a more or less unified whole a long time ago, and that we've been able to learn from the differences between the lifestyles in the world's various cultures. But if we were to go back thousands of years, life in the Chinese city of Chang'an and life in the city of Rome would have been very different. Few of us ever think about the fact that the culture of which we are a part was not the creation of a particular individual far back in time, but has been inherited over many generations. So what kind of lifestyles did our ancestors and the civilizations of the East and West lead in the distant past? And what does the way they lived then have to do with the way we live today? To explore these questions, we're going to take you on a remarkable journey. And our first stop will be at the homes of people who lived more than 2,000 years ago. This is Mount Vesuvius, which is an active volcano. On August the 24th in the year 79 BCE, Mount Vesuvius erupted violently, wiping out the city at its base. That city was, of course, Pompeii. And today, Pompeii is regarded as a time capsule that has sealed within it scenes of life from the days of ancient Rome over 2,000 years ago. The way the ancient Romans laid out their living spaces is nothing like the layouts used today. The atrium or open roofed entrance was quite large, whereas the individual rooms were all very small and some of them had no windows. It's natural to wonder whether the residents felt cramped living in such small rooms. E qui ci troviamo all'interno di una tipica casa pompeiana. Tutte le attività domestiche venivano svolte in questo spazio. Per esempio, di giorno era uno spazio al maschile con il tablino, la stanza principale dove il padrone di casa poteva ricevere anche i suoi ospiti e il pomeriggio le donne potevano filare in questo spazio o tessere in questo spazio che aveva molta luce dall'alto. Rooms could be small, but the atrium had to be spacious. This was because the ancient Romans thought that the bedroom was for sleeping only, while the atrium was the principal living space. Ah, Ancient Romans engaged in various activities such as eating and social entertainment, which Chinese people feel should be conducted indoors, in the open atrium. And they felt that the atrium was indispensable regardless of the direction the house was oriented towards. This reflected their philosophy of being close to nature. After 2,000 years, modern Europeans still have a soft spot for enjoying life in open-air courtyards. This shows how traditions have been continued through the generations. So, what principles of life are embodied in dwellings in China in the ancient city of Chang'an? Woman this kind of traditional house can still be found in Chang'an today. What is it like to live in this kind of house? Oh, Compared with the Romans, the Chinese attached greater importance to indoor space and they had very different requirements regarding various environmental considerations such as the direction the house would face. The principal room was always built along the central axis that ran from north to south. Wing rooms were on the left and right laid out symmetrically. People in both the East and the West were seeking the best way of life possible, 
After all, people everywhere who can enjoy a good home and living environment will have greater peace of mind. And this was certainly true of the ancestors of people on both sides of the world. But what both cultures came up with through sheer imaginative power went well beyond that. With its extensive transport networks, driving in today's city of Xi'an is something to be enjoyed. However, during the Tang Dynasty over 1,100 years ago, the city of Chang'an covered 84.1 square kilometers, a truly vast area for a city at that time. As a cosmopolitan city that saw the arrival of envoys from nations all over the known world, transportation requirements must have been of the utmost importance. How did people in those times travel from one place to another? And how does what they did back then influence us here today? At the other end of the world, the city which every road led to was Rome. As a megacity of its time, transportation was extremely important. And the ancient Romans seemed to have possessed a particular talent for devising transportation systems. So much so that some of their transport methods still influence us today. So. What did the Romans pass down to us from thousands of years ago? Today, the city of Xi'an may not be the frantically busy city it was in the era of the Tang Dynasty, but relics left to us by history can help us find the answers. As you look at the street lined with hitching posts, it isn't too difficult to imagine how heavy the traffic was in Chang'an back then. The Tang people's enthusiasm for the Fergana horse was equal to the love people have for luxury sports cars today. However, by that time, rickshaws and ox carts had also been in use in China for generations. There must have been some reason why people of the Tang era had this preference for horses. In the Tang Dynasty, Chang'an was the largest city in the world, covering an area of 84.1 square kilometers. If you wanted to travel from north to south or from east to west, you needed to travel quite a few kilometers, and riding a horse was the fastest way. In the Tang Dynasty era, traveling by horseback was the first choice of Chang'an residents. Perhaps from the moment the horsewhip was first cracked in ancient times, people became overwhelmed by the pleasure of riding at speed. And it was those days a thousand years ago when people were galloping around at speed that shaped the constant goal of future generations to attain vehicular speed and control. These desires have been handed down to us for more than a thousand years from the wild pursuits of the Tang people. In ancient times, the preferred mode of transport employed by the Romans was the horse carriage. Bumpy gravel roads have been part of the landscape around Rome since ancient times, and carriages have been running on them for thousands of years. This museum can reveal some fascinating secrets about transportation back then. Ah, this is a some say that the four-wheeled carriages of the ancient Romans have had a direct bearing on the basic structure of today's cars. But is this really the case?现在的汽车也好，火车也好，原本都是脱胎于古代的马车技术。古罗马的影响一直持续到现在，这样说一点也不为过。我还从来没有上过，我们试试这简直就已经如何。就类似于咱们坐船，就是浏览那个船，你上
。这个点儿的罗马，应该说已经到了他一天当中最美好的时候。我们能够在交通工具的变革当中感受到，我们今人与古人可以说是一脉相承。The way we travel today is inseparable from the convenience and comfort that came about due to technologies developed in ancient Rome, and it's also inseparable from the Tang people's pursuit and enjoyment of speed on horseback. The way forward always has a great allure. When technology is combined with daring. How long can an obsession last? Is it a lifetime, or is it more like a kind of eternity? Because of a restless enthusiasm for thousands of years, our relentless desire to win has never ceased. Obsessions can traverse the huge void of time, ranging across the globe from east to west, writing our shared stories. During the hand in a steer round 2,200 years ago, a training method involving kicking a football was promoted in the army. It was believed that kicking the football not only helped soldiers stay fit and healthy, but was also something they could enjoy. It was known as tuju, but what kind of sport was it? The answer lies, it seems, in this precious cultural relic. This is the Dongshan tuju. This guy is doing a leg raise, and then his left leg is on the ground. This is very interesting. Because in that era, this tuju was originally a single leg raise, like the leg raise. 本来就是要提出各种的画式动作来，这就是一个鲜活的写照。It seems that long ago, tuju became a competitive sports event, and whether you could play it or not was a criterion for judging your ability as a soldier. So, from the outset, tuju was a sports event that inspired people to win. How could people resist becoming obsessed by it? By the time of the Tang Dynasty, tuju had become all the more appealing. It was an epoch-making reform that caused Tang people to become fascinated with Tuju 